see a little spot here that I want to fill in. I want to make this nice bright white come I got kind of a weird spot right here. So I'm going to tuck it in there. I'm trying to eliminate a true fold, so I'll just make it kind of fuzzy. I feel like it's a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Too like, so I'm gonna add a little bit of plump. Yeah, just kind of a little, change the contour here a little bit. Maybe I will put that little foot in there. Okay. We've got an eyeball in there. I'm going to use some of the soft white, the mixed light, and this is the mixed medium. I'm going to mix a little bit together. I want to put it under the eye. I'm going to cut it in half. On the face, we're probably going to cut most of our fiber in half because we have a limited amount of space here. Restacking helps get rid of the cut edge look. This is the light. Some light towards the back here. Working underneath that last one I just added. A little bit. It's a little bit, um, a little bit long. And just like I had some reflected light on this edge, I'm going to add a little bit to the back of the head here. We have this kind of back of the head is in shadow, but if we put just a little bit of our medium there. You can cut it to make it the right shape. It's just slightly lighter, and then so that light next to that black that we put there gives it a little pop. Just cut it on the thin side so that it ends up pretty small. All right, I'm gonna go to some of the true white. Again, I'm gonna cut it in half. Save some for later. Nice and bright on the top of his head, really. Now I want a pretty distinct line at the top of the head. So if I just fold this in half to get that rolled edge, I can really, um, and use a single needle, 
I can really define that line. No, I don't really want him to look like he has fuzz hanging over his eyes, so I'm going to stab all of that in. This is important, this little bump right here, so take your time achieving that. I'm going to put a little um, medium and, and light mixed together like I did here, right in this, um, what would be like sort of the crease of the, um, of their little muzzle. So I mixed the two together, cutting it in half. And, you know, just, you only want to use the amount of wool that you need and can control. I feel like the single needle really, sometimes you really need that. You know what stab. gauge that is? Just a 38? Or... <laughs> Sorry, I asked you a hard question. <laughs> Not a 40 twist. Um, no, it's got a good bit of grab. It might be a 36. But... But, or maybe a 38. All right, and then I want pretty much nice and bright right here on his cheek. So I'll stick with the pure white. Uh, I think I need to cut it in half. And I might just, instead of folding it this time, I just let these ends I might need to put a little another little piece there just so that it looks nice and full and white. I feel like it looks a little rangy. <laughs> He's look healthy. People can't see you, but you're often looking at your reference picture. Yes. Oh, yes. Constantly. This is what I'm doing to my phone. You can see the rabbit. <laughs> yes. Constantly looking at a reference picture. Okay. And then we need to really do this little nose here. So I'm gonna take some of my white mix, my light mix. I'm gonna put it here. I cut the edge so that I can control where it goes. I want it to come right up under that black line that we put earlier. All right, I'm going to leave that be for now until I decide what else it needs. And then I want the nose to be nice and white. And to define this, I think I'm going to wrap the Zolitol and leave a little fringe. So I have part, you know, rounded edge and some fringe to blend. 
and then really use that rolled edge to make a clear nose and let the fringe blend in with the rest. just like we do 2D sometimes. You can use your needle to, to really tweak the wool around a little bit. Get those lines nice and sharp. good to take like a little bit of natural black. Oh, <laughs> Mail. Stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. Eating lots of stabbing. What was I doing? I was making a little dark natural black line. You were on the nose. I'm on the eyes. Oh. And then you can just let that Make that little, what is that? I don't know. Eye line. And then I'm going to put another one underneath. I want it to be a little bit lighter just to kind of look like a little highlight. So I'm going to use the um, almond color. That's too long. You know what I think I'll do on this one? I think I'll bring a couple of locks. Ooh, up onto it. I might have to cut this again. Or just run back. This gives him a little eyelid. And then he needs a white dot. Tiny white dot. If you have a really rich brown, you could put a little bit in this lower, um, sort of from 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock corner. things um, I mean technically I've kind of done everything that I want to do but um, this is bugging me this is a really just too consistent of a line so I'm going to try and get rid of some of this fiber and then maybe take some of my light which I'm mostly out of and break it up a little bit by just putting it over it. A couple small fibers make such a big difference. Yeah, and then here too, I feel like this is a little, little heavy of a shadow. Um, so I'm gonna take some light, kind of do the same thing without folding if I don't fold it, then I have two edges. Let me thicken this up a little bit by cutting it. Then I have two fuzzy edges to blend, you know, each way. So when you take a photograph of something, it really shows you what's happening and so it's not a bad idea to do that and then reevaluate. So this time I thought it would be fun to put a little bit of locks and stuff just coming up. This was a neat little piece that came out of this yarn. I have this yarn here and this yarn here so three is kind of a nicer number than um, two in terms of composition. So I think I'll let that 
do something. Right, shtick. Sometimes you gotta get the single needle and really drive it in there. See if I can make this a little more dainty at the end. I changed that because it was going right into the same spot where there was a change in value here and so that made it look too much like a line. So you want to avoid stuff like that. And then I think maybe one lock just to kind of pull this little foreground bit together. Makes him look a little bit more like he's tucked in. Tucked into the woods here. losing perspective and it's just that. I feel like you could play with these for a long time. Mm-hmm. Good. Oh, I'm moving. Moving. Drifting. Anyway, how does that look through the camera? It looks fancy. Cool. Needs lots of punching. I'll show you how it looks. looks Tasty but flat. <laughs> I prefer my critters. I'll probably, I see a little spot here where I feel like it's a little, that should be nice and white there. So let's just fix that. We have, um, okay, so this is the first one I did in preparation. This is the second one I did once we figured out what materials to use. And then this is the one that I did during filming. So I think I'll, I think this one's the best just in terms of like the way it looks from a distance and the and the colors and the, the values so I think I'll tweak this one a little bit but you can just keep you know you can keep fussing with it you can keep adding details you can make some real beautiful punches of color and contrast um, just with the tiniest little bits of wool so it's a really fun way to needle felt I think I like my rabbits with a little more meat on their bones. Yeah, you like 3D. Yes. <laughs> they're they're plump. pretty though. Yes, they're kind pretty. Kind of like a picture of a pizza. Right. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Can't really quite wrap your mouth around a photograph of a pizza, can you? No. No. So thanks so much, and we will see you at um, on Facebook at Serafina Felting Fanfare and at serafinafiberart.com.